A lot of math involves application. When am I going to use this in the real world and how can I take some situation, turn it into algebra so that you're able to solve problems? So 2.5 is really important because we want to be able to translate, in this case, in this section, a few sentences into an equation and be able to solve a problem. So, specifically we're going to be talking about percentages. Whenever we have a percentage in an equation, it needs to be in what form? Decimal. Keep that in mind. But generally, when we report things, we talk about some percentage instead of saying, well, 0 0.01 of all the people in Asia, blah, 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 and whatever continues. So we usually use percentage. Okay. So I love getting a good deal, whether it be furniture, groceries, clothing. I love sales and getting a percentage off my total. Suppose Pier 1, fancy, fancy, is having a sale for 10% off your total purchase in store. If I buy $1,300 worth of furniture, how much will I save? You're probably screaming right now, $130 off, so how did you get there? Well, you took the $1,300, multiplied it by 10%, or we just moved the decimal place one to the left. Okay, so we want to be able to take more complicated examples than that and find a solution. So, we need to break down the words. What does each word mean in these sentences? So, keywords in percent translations. The word of means multiplication. Is always gives us equality. What percent or what number we can choose any letter that we want, any variable to represent. And percent means per 100. As a decimal again, what does it represent? Because in equations, we need to have percentage as a decimal. All right, so one per 100 as a decimal looks like that. So, we're not gonna solve anything in these first few examples. We're literally just gonna translate, parse the sentence down. So we wanna write this as an algebraic equation. What's it gonna look like? So 28%, whenever we have an equation, Percentages need to be written in decimal form. So, 28% as a decimal looks like what? 0.28. The word of means multiplication. Five, obviously, it's constant, we'll put it down. Is means equal to what number? Some unknown. I'm gonna say N. So, 28% of five is what number? Good. And we'll break down some more. 46%, again, in the equation, needs to be in decimal form. 0.46. The word of means multiplication. What number, some unknown, I'm going to call it X, is 17. So if I took that sentence away from you, you should be able to still tell me. Okay, I'm looking at 46% of some number is 17. We're trying to figure out what number makes that true. So last, again, what percent, I'm going to call it P, percent, makes sense, of, what percent of 105 is 9? Again, if I took the sentence away from you, you should be able to ask what number or what percentage or what quantity of 105 is 9. Okay, so take those three tries that are given to you. Translate them. Don't solve for anything. Just give me the algebraic equations. So in the first one, what number, n, or whatever variable you called it, is 68% of 20? Again, take the sentence away from you. You should be able to still tell me what it says. Same here, 13% needs to be a decimal. Of means multiplication, constant, is, is equality, what number? N. Same for the last, 14, constant, is, means equality. What percent, we usually call it P, so we don't get confused later. Of means multiplication, and constant. Nice. So, since we can, translate a sentence into algebra that we can actually use and solve for a variable. We're going to use that. 
So next, we know that 20 is 25% of 80, or 20 equals 25% times 80. We need to convert that percentage to a decimal if we're going to actually multiply that guy out. But we can think of this as the amount, so 20 in that case, is the percent number times the base, what we're multiplying by. So we have the amount, the percent number, and the base to deal with. We have those in every single equation, and sometimes we're solving for the amount, sometimes we're solving for the percent, sometimes we're solving for the base. So we're going to look at those three different cases, and there are three examples for each of them. So the first one, finding the amount, the result of taking the percent. So what number is 25% of 80? 20, what we're trying to figure out is the amount, finding the base, the number you're actually taking the percentage of. So 20 is 25% of what number? We call that what number the base. Finding the percent number, the percent itself. 20 is what percent of 80? Trying to solve for the percentage. So we have those three different cases. They behave pretty much the same, but we have to remember with percentages, when we're reporting the percentage, we need to have the little symbol on the back. So, let's work through a few. One for me, one for you, one for me, one for you, you get the pattern. First, we're actually going to solve these now. What number is 11% of 58? So first of all, we need to parse it down and write it as, as an equation. So what number, I'm going to call it n, is means equality, 11% as a decimal is, 0.11 of, is multiplication, 58 is a constant. So, that one, our variable is already isolated. We just have to do the multiplication. n is equal to 6.38. So we could write a little sentence, plugging it back in and just saying what happened. So 6.38 is 11% of 58. Easy enough. Take one for you. What number is 3.6% of 24? So again, you have to parse it down. What number, I'm going to call it x this time, is as a decimal 0 0.036 of 24. Doing the multiplication, doing the math, and we get out x is equal to 0.864. And again, that's helpful to reiterate what happened. We can say 0.864 is 3.6% of 24. Okay, so in that case we were solving for the amount when it was pretty straightforward. We just had to do some multiplication. So now let's look at finding the base. I have the amount, I have the percentage, I'm trying to figure out what number. So again, let's parse it. 4 is a constant. Is means equality as a decimal, 17% is. 0.17 of multiplication. What number? I'm going to call it n. So in that case, n isn't isolated. Our vari variables before were on their own. In this case, we need to solve for that n. So what needs to happen? We need to divide both sides by 0.17. Oh, there we go. So n is equal to 23.5294. And if I give you problems um, on an exam where you're calculating the percentages or the base, I'll give you easier numbers to work with usually. Okay. But for now, just concept-wise, I want you to be able to set it up and know how to solve for, um, in this case, the base. So, go ahead and take the next one. 23.4 is 22% of what base, of what number? So parse it down. Write it as an equation. And again, what needs to happen? I want n on its own. I need to divide both sides by 0.22. So n is equivalent to 106.364. All right. 
So we solve for the amount. We solve for the base. Now we're going to solve for percentages. And the thing we have to remember with the percent is at the end, we need to report it in percent notation, not as a decimal. So let's parse it down. We actually have some units on here now as well, which is cool. We deal with money a lot when we're talking about percentages, whether it be an interest rate on the mortgage that you have, um, getting a sale at a store, how much money you're getting off, trying to calculate that kind of thing in your head. So it's good practice. So again, let's parse it down. 32 is a constant. Is means equality. What percent? I'm going to call it P, so I know it's a percentage, so in the end, I'll write the little percent symbol of, is multiplication, 60. So I have the amount, I have the base, I need the percentage. So how do we solve for P? I need to divide both sides by 60. So P is equivalent to 0.533. Okay, so again, what is P? It's a percentage, so we usually don't talk about 32 is 0.533 of 60. We like to report it as a percentage. So in this case, what percent am I talking about? 53.3%. Okay, so in solving these problems, you have to remember to convert to percent notation, just means putting the thing on the back, having the decimal point moved, and you're all done. Alright, so one last for you to try. What percent of $75 is $19? So P, what percent of 75 is 19? I want P on its own, we need to divide by 75. So P is equal to, what did you get? 0.2533. So again, it's a percentage since we labeled it P. So in reality, this is 25.3% around there. So the only difference between solving the three different kinds is with percentages. You have to remember to report your answer in percent notation.